Okay, hello everyone, dear judgment, uh, dear judgment and friends. Okay, it's very honor for me to uh, get this opportunity to share our uh, study here. Okay, so actually now in China is afternoon, so maybe uh, in Greece uh, it's uh, morning. So good morning, everyone, and uh, I hope all of you can get a very wonderful experience in the next fifteen minutes. And in the next 15 minutes, I will share something about Chinese special education field for you. And uh, maybe you want to ask, why did I choose this topic to do this uh, study? Uh, actually, um, okay, I will uh, explain these reasons from the following four parts for you. And uh, Okay, this is my reason to uh, do this research. Okay, in China, the eighth curricular revolution uh, has started about uh, 20 years and uh, special education is a very essential part of basic education. Uh, it also leads to be revoluted. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, special education is not very mature in China. So many things uh, cannot uh, meet the social and the educational uh, demands. So uh, some, some design and uh, some textbook lead to be changed. So you can see here uh, in 2016, uh, a new curriculum standards for the school for the blind, uh, deaf, and the mental retardation was published by the uh, ministry. And uh, in the same year, corresponding textbook were edited and published. And uh, uh, in 2017, uh, in 2017, uh, this book was applied in the uh, each uh, special education school for the grade one. And uh, you know, uh, this uh, study is my bachelor dissertation and that time is uh, 2019. So uh, it's very short time to uh, use. Uh, so it's very short time to use the new textbook. It's only half a year. Uh, so in this time, few study did any uh, related systematic and empirical research. So uh, this is a very giant gap to know uh, the real situation about the uh, about the application about the new textbook. So that's why I choose this topic to do the research. Okay, let's look at the next page. Uh, in here, you can see the four questions will be dissolved in the study. The first one is to investigate the current application of the uh, new textbook in Sichuan province. And the second one is to test the correlation between teachers overall congregation about the new textbook and their understanding of the new curricular standards. Okay, let's look at the next page. Uh, here you can see the significance of the study. Uh, I have said above uh, the new textbook Book just only used uh, for one half a year. So there are lack of uh, some um, real situation um, feedbacks. So uh, according to the study, it can um, reflect some real situation um, used by the teacher and uh, uh, by the students. So to dig a uh, deep uh, into the implementation of the new book, it can provide a better suggestion for teachers' instructional activities. And it also can improve the teachers' efficiency uh, while they use the while they use the new textbook. Okay. Let's look at chapter two. Uh, uh, chapter two refers to the methodology, and uh, uh, in this study, the methodology contains eight parts. Okay, let's look at the next page. Uh, this study is a quantitative study. And uh, in the study, we choose interview and the questionnaire as the uh, tool uh, to do the investigation. And uh, 30 schools for the students with uh, special needs uh, 
uh, other uh, where the sample location and the teacher in the 30 schools are the sample and the location pro uh, location place is the Trump province because Trump province is my hometown so actually this is a convenience sampling and uh, so the first thing is do the interview for the four teachers in the 30 schools and uh, according to the interview we make sure the dimensions uh, of the questionnaire and uh, based on the Nitian Yas questionnaire, we uh, added uh, we added a new questionnaire, and uh, you can see here. After the first time testing in the 30 teachers, uh, the first question questionnaire was modified, and which contains 39 questions. And uh, it has good structural validity and uh, good re uh, reliability. Uh, and uh, we will keep the secret uh, for the sample. And uh, finally, we got uh, 127 uh, questionnaires and the re relevant date was collected by the SPP S25 and the uh, data also analyzed by the SPS. 25. This is methodology part. Okay, let's look at the chapter three. Uh, and this part, I will show you uh, some, some results about the uh, study. Okay, the first part is demographic information. And in here, you can see the age of teacher who used the new textbook. Uh, there are total uh, 127 teachers, and the most of them uh, are the age from 20 years old to 30 years old, and uh, 29 teachers from um, 30 years old to 40 years old, and uh, few teachers are from um, age 14 plus. So we can get a conclusion. Young and middle-aged teachers were the main force in the teachers group. Okay, let's look at the next demographic information. Here you can see uh, there are total 88 teachers who have the teaching age about five years to 10 years. And uh, in the total of uh, teachers, uh, 58, got bachelor degree and uh, 21 teachers got a junior college degree and uh, very few people got high school and uh, master above uh, degree. So we can say uh, young and middle-aged teachers was the, were the main force in the sampling group. Okay, let's look at the next demographic information. Uh, in here, you can say uh, so many uh, so many uh, so many teachers who have the special education background uh, and uh, uh, the general education always is always the uh, second uh, the second uh, white uh, uh, major background and. Uh, According to the status, we can say teacher who use the new textbook in special education, uh, many got special education majors and uh, very few teachers got other majors. And, uh, and uh, some teachers uh, majors are unknown. Okay, let's look at the next part. Uh, we have uh, four questions in the study. Okay, let's look at the first uh, question. Uh, the correlation between teachers' overall condition of the new textbook and the teacher's understanding of the new curriculum standards. Uh, you can see here uh, the Pearson correlation coefficient, coefficient uh, between the two variables is uh, 16, uh, 6. 1, 5, and the sign is uh, 0, 0, 0. So we can say uh, there was a very significant and a moderate positive correlation between the two variables. And uh, let's look at the next question. And the next question is to prove the uh, predictive relation between the teacher's understanding of the new curriculum standards and the teacher's over or of the new textbook. 
uh, we can see here that R square is uh, 0.379 and the sine is 0, 0, 0. Although the R square is not very high, but uh, the sine is uh, uh, useful. So we can say uh, the regression analyzed in the study is also exists uh, because uh, um, although this uh, R square is not very high, but this uh, uh, this index is also useful, and uh, we can get a conclusion, which is a teacher's comprehension and uh, uh, about the quickness affect the teacher's use of new text teaching materials. Okay, this is. Uh, the second question. And the third question is the correlation between teachers' overall condition of new textbook and the, their instructional methods. According to the table, we can say the Spearman correlation coughing is 6 to 2 and the sign is 0, 0, 0. So the positive correlation between the overall condition of the new textbook and the instructional methods used by teachers Okay, is exist. Okay, let's look at the next part, discussion and conclusion. And this part contains three, uh, three, uh, three models. Okay, let's look at the first models. Uh, according to this study, we can get some funding. Uh, that is, uh, the current situation was pursued by most teachers. Uh, that is, uh. The teachers doesn't have very. The teachers don't have very uh, uh, high efficiency instructional methods, and they're uh, accepted because the main reason is the new textbook is a little bit uh, difficult than the old book because the uh, new uh, textbook has so many pictures. Although these pictures can attract students' attention. But these pictures cannot explain the text content uh, fully. Uh, so uh, for students with deafness, they cannot uh, uh, understand the uh, text content very well. So they think uh, this uh, textbook is a little bit a little bit uh, difficult than the old book because old book has so many words on each page. Okay. Uh, this is main funding of the study, and uh, let's look at the suggestion. Uh, we have already know the textbook has some advantages and uh, disadvantages, but how to uh, solve these disadvantages? We can do it from the following three parts. The first part is functional departments, and the second part is uh, from teachers. Uh, it itself. And the next part is cons uh, we should consider the editor institutions. Okay, let's look at the first part, functional departments. Functional departments should uh, set up uh, more and useful top level designs for uh, guidance teachers how to use the uh, uh, new curriculum and how to use the new textbook for teachers. And uh, the functional department should set up uh, uh, plenty of uh, supports for teachers, such as uh, hold on some academic conference and uh, uh, set some evaluation uh, systems for teachers. And uh, the next one is uh, establish uh, enrich resource for teachers to communicate uh, their teaching results. And uh, let's look at the second uh, part uh, that focus on teacher's vision. Uh, teacher's vision tell us uh, teachers should know and uh, should understand the concept of new curricular standards very well based on the situation. Uh, they should know the uh, students' uh, real situation and according to these things change their evaluation ways to the students, because you know, students with deafness uh, 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 One minute influence, 
yeah, okay, influenced by their hearing deafness, uh, some of them cannot hear so many sounds, but some of them can hear so many sounds. Uh, some of them just rely on the sign language, some of them can pronounce. So the uh, very, very standard uh, evaluation way cannot uh, use the full uh, each student, uh, so for each student, teachers should set a different uh, evaluation um, uh, evaluation method. Uh, teachers cannot use the same test paper for them. And the next one is uh, the editor the editors should um, establish a mechanism to uh, get teachers feedback to uh, compile the book again and again. Okay, this is suggestions and let's look at the last uh, part, limitations and prospects. Okay, so uh, the all studies only in focus on teacher's vision, it's not consistent about uh, students' vision and the parents' vision. And uh, you know, the education has very difference in different uh, place. So this is a relational difference and uh, our conclusion cannot be separated in the each school because this reason. And uh, the next one is the sample amount is not very giant. So it's not, uh, it cannot use the uh, conclusion to uh, each school. So this is all content for the presentation. Thanks for your listening. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for the um, uh, really interesting uh, presentation. I'm sure we we all have some some questions. I do myself, but I'll try to to to, to keep them uh, for now until we we move on to the Q and A uh, section right after um, all presentations. Um, now I would like uh, I would like us to proceed with the with the second presentation: reasoning and proof in algebra, the case of three reform oriented textbooks. Uh, in China. Uh, Yu Fu, a PhD student from Beijing Norman uh, University in China, will be presenting, I guess, on behalf of uh, Chun Sa Chin and Raya Wan. Excuse me? Okay, yeah, maybe this is another sound. Uh, we, can, um, we can make a start. With, um, oh. with the first uh, presentation. Uh, uh, Yufu, you have um, 15 minutes as well. And I'll let you know when you have uh, one minute left so that you can wrap up your uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, okay. Good morning, Good morning professors and teachers. I'm honored and proud to have the opportunity to speak at this meeting. Today, I would like to present my paper, Reasoning and Proof in Algebra, the case of three reform-oriented textbooks in China. In the <laughs> first part, uh, I'm going to begin with an introduction concerning textbook research recently, and then discuss in more detail specific issue which concern the framework of research and methodology, and present findings, discussion, and conclusion in the last. Algebra as a language of mathematics is a very important topic and a central sub subject area in the curriculum of some countries, particularly in the classical content. Researchers show that students' main source of learning is test books, and uh, they are more affected by test books than teachers. Although mathematics textbooks always play a central role in the opportunities wherein students must participate in reasoning and prove evidence about the RP in contemporary mathematics textbooks is not sufficient. Then I will introduce framework of research. Uh, in this paper, we would solve four research questions. What types of RP are contained in the narratives of three series of mathematics textbooks? What are the differences in the RP distribution across grade levels in the algebra content? How are types of RP distributed across different topics in the algebra content? And what are the purpose of the patterns, conjectures, and proofs among the topics of three series of mathematics textbooks? 
We choose the latest series published by the People's Education Press, Beijing Normal University Publishing Group, and the Beijing Academy of Educational Sciences. Since the three series of mathematics textbooks lacked consistency to make our results comparable, we only choose the narratives of three series of mathematics textbooks and then analyze the, the RP tasks of the narratives. This is the, the theoretical framework. The framework used in this study was derived from Stolicin's and Davis' work. The elements and the purpose of RP are included in analytical framework. The four elements are pattern, conjectures, proof, and non-proof. This is the coding process. Example one is that according to the following question, determine the unknown number and the equation. Use a 24 centimeter wire to form a square. What is the side length of the square? It provides an example which identifies a pattern. The students are required to distinguish the relationship between the side side length and the parameter of a square, which could be a definite pattern. Moreover, students are not guided to make a conjecture, which could be coded as a conjecture non precursor Example two is that calculate the following formulas and observe the results. Can you conjecture what rules they have? It presents an example of developing a conjecture. Students are asked to fill in the bank space of the formulas and then make a conjecture in order to generate new knowledge. Also, there are many multiple codings. For example, in the in this example, students are asked to graph the following functions, make a conjecture, and uh, provide a non-proof argument. Indeed, the student, uh, the teacher needs to get students to make a conjecture according to above three definite patterns. Such instances were coded as the development of definite patterns and conjectures and the construction of non-proof arguments. That is, we did consider that students would construct uh, con conjectures in order to explore the properties of a linear function further. I will introduce the findings from the following five aspects, RP tasks and the non-RP tasks across textbooks, RP components across text textbooks by task, distributions of uh, reasoning and proof tasks in different lab grade levels of, across textbooks, examining percentages of RP tasks by topic and uh, textbooks, purpose of patterns, conjectures, and proofs. Uh, from the table, among the three series of uh, textbooks, the BNUPG textbooks provide the lowest percentage of RP tasks uh, also, we could find uh, uh, we could find that um, PEP provided the RP tasks percent the same as the BAES. Um, there were relatively limited opportunities for students to learn RP from the narratives of of the algebra content of the three series of textbooks um, from grade seven to nine. The PEP textbooks contain uh, the most opportunities for students to identify patterns. Meanwhile, the BNU PG textbooks contain the most opportunities for students to make conjectures. And the BAES textbooks contain the most opportunities for students to provide non-proof arguments. What the three series of mathematics textbooks had in common was that they provided equal opportunities for uh, proof arguments. The largest difference among the three series of textbooks was the total RP test. Uh, the important outcomes from the test show that there was no significant statistical difference in the component of RP tasks by grade among the three series of textbooks. Um, there also, uh, there was evidence to indicate, indicate the following. Different series of textbooks provide different opportunities for patterns, conjectures, proof, 
arguments and non-proof arguments in different grades in algebra content. In the PP and the BAES textbooks, opportunities for patterns, conjectures, and non-proof arguments in the seventh grade units was more than uh, those in another two grades. Opportunities for patterns, conjectures, proof arguments, and non-proof arguments in the exam eighth grade units were more than those in another two grades in the BNU PG textbooks. What the three series of textbooks had in common was that there were relatively few opportunities for plausible patterns and generic examples in the algebra content. Meanwhile, the number of opportunities for demonstration were the least. Regarding the comparisons of the topics in algebra content, there was evidence to indicate that there was no significant statistical difference in the RP tasks by topic among the three series of mathematics textbooks. However, we could also find the following. The percentage of RP tasks in the topic um, equations was the highest followed by functions, and the percentage of RP tasks in algebraic exper exp uh, expressions were the lowest in the three series. The RP task percent of uh, factorization was highest compared to the other topics in L algebraic expressions. There are differences in arrangement of every topic among the PEP, BNU, PG, and the BAES textbooks. Uh, for example, this is the topic of equations. The RP task percent of linear equations with one unknown was the highest compared to the other subtopics in the PEP tasks. However, this wasn't uh, the same case in another two series of mathematics textbooks. This also happened in the topic of functions among the three series of textbooks. Also, we uh, examined the purpose of patterns, conjectures, and proofs. Apparently, the proportion of conjecture non procurers were the higher than that of conjecture procurers in the topic sampled from three series of textbooks. The proportion of argument non procurers was uh, higher than that of uh, argument procurers. Among the proofs, also, almost all served the purpose of generating new knowledge and others were used for explanation and verification. Meanwhile, there was no falsification in the algebra. Um, we, uh, we found the four main conclusions in this, pa this, in this paper. There were subtle differences between two frameworks. Davis added the testing of conjectures of the development of conjectures. We used the uh, uh, Davis frameworks to examine the aim of conjectures. The proportion of conjecture non procurers was uh, higher than that of conjecture procurer in the topic sample, sampled from the three series of textbooks. The proportion of argument non procurers was higher than that of argument procurers. Meanwhile, most teachers in many areas rely on textbooks. Um, in their teaching, there is a growing awareness that curricular materials has have the potential to influence the knowledge of practicing teachers. Um, the percentage of RP tasks was less than 40%, which showed that there were not enough RP opportunities in the algebra content. The reasoning and proof of the opportunities provided by their mathematics textbooks students may cause that they don't form a habit of engage, engaging in reasoning and proof in their secondary years. Um, in the last, although there was no significant statistical difference in the component of RP tasks by grade among the three series of textbooks, there were differences in the distribution of RP tasks by grades and the topics in algebra. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your uh, uh, thank you thank you Yufu for for the presentation and I can already see some um, some some common themes that uh, we can discuss uh, during the Q and A uh, section at least um, from the from the first two uh, two presentations and I think we can um, now move on to the third presentation uh, in today's uh, session a case study of the comparative uh, 
of the comparative analysis of textbooks using knowledge modeling uh, math. Uh, and uh, we have the pleasure uh, to have uh, Zhang Weiwei uh, with us uh, from uh, Beijing uh, Norman University in China. So Zhang Weiwei, uh, you, are, you can start uh, whenever you are ready. You have uh, 15 minutes and I can uh, give you a reminder when you have one minute left. Uh, you are on mute, I think. <laughs> this is the classic problem that we have on Zoom. <laughs> so I have asked you to unmute, but for some reason that the button doesn't work. Yeah, okay, you did it yourself. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Zhang Huihui from Beijing Normal University. Uh, uh, my research title is uh, a case study of the comparative analysis of textbooks using a knowledge modeling map. And, uh, my, and I will present uh, my research in three aspects. Uh, introduction, knowledge modeling map, a case study. And uh, for and uh, part one is instruction. As we are knowing, use, using an effective method to te mm, test testify the quality of textbooks is a common concern of the education researchers. Current uh, textbooks analysis methods is uh, categorized into um, quantitative analysis and uh, qualitative analysis. The quantitative analysis uh, methods by using knowledge map, map uh, using knowledge map is widely used. However, the subjective of some knowledge maps caused by less uh, standardized drawing forced to make objective analysis of a large amount of textbooks. Uh, this study introduced a new textbook analysis method that is knowledge modeling map, which solved the above problem. And next, I will introduce the knowledge modeling map. The uh, knowledge modeling map uh, is a kind of learning content analysis method, which de which divides uh, which divides knowledge into seven types and the different types are present in different uh, shapes. This shape is uh, um, cognitive strategies. This shape is a concept. This shape is uh, um, pro progress steps, principle and uh, formula and, and uh, format, fact and the keys. This, this shape is the uh, symbols. Uh, there is a relationship between two knowledge uh, types according to the certain specifications and uh, according to this specification, we can draw a objective knowledge modeling map. FC belong, belongs to the facts and examples of the seven types of knowledge solutions, solutions Products, phen phenomena, um, problem, cases, examples, facts, all belong to the FC knowledge. FC knowledge contains the application of knowledge, which is a greater value to the cultivation of students' ability. So the quality of FC knowledge particularly important for the com com compilation of textbooks. Therefore, we need to make a deeper analysis of FC knowledge. Uh, in, in this research, we use the FC knowledge map to analyze FC knowledge. The FC knowledge map presents the initial state 
of FC knowledge. Knowledge points used in process solving in the problems and the solution path path of the problem and its uh, combination states. Uh, so, so it can achieve an objective presentation of the problem. This is an FC knowledge map. The left is the FC, the right is its FC knowledge map. And the next, I'm going to introduce a case study. Uh, oh. This study selects a part of the textbook about the which from the People's Education Press, PEP, and the Beijing Normal University Press, BNUP. And the two versions of the textbook are writing in the same syllabus according to the specifications, we draw the knowledge module map and FC knowledge map, and then discuss two differences in the textbook knowledge, content and <laughs> FC knowledge. Firstly, we discuss the knowledge module map. After analysis, we find several results. The knowledge points about the circle are basically the same. The knowledge points of PEP are more detailed, and the knowledge points of the BNUP are relatively concise. The textbook of BNUP has neglected the two important knowledge, and the two uh, knowledge points is an important uh, basis for learning other relative concerns. The most obviously, the BNUP is not involved in cognitive strategies type of the knowledge. Uh, next, we discuss FC knowledge maps. The, no, the FC knowledge map contains three types of nodes, thin nodes, uh, operation child nodes, and uh, concept nodes. This is thin nodes. This is a concept node. This is an operation child node. We can analyze the difficulty of FC by using, using the complex, complexity of FC knowledge. We assume that the length of paths plus the number of the prints principles is equal to the complexity of FC. So the longer the, uh, the longer the path of FC, the more principles it contains and the more complex FC is. Here are our uh, strati statistics. And uh, according to these statistics, we find uh, in class, the number of the FC of the BNUP is significantly higher than that in the PEP, but the upside is true after class. In class, the number of the knowledge paths uh, and the principal content in FC of the BNUP is more. From this, we can see that the BNUP of FC is much more difficult than the PEP, but the upside is true after class. We can conclude that uh, the BNUP lay more emphasis on students' inquiry learning in class. And that's all, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, presentation, Zhang Weiwei. Uh, we can keep any questions as always um, for, the, for the end. And we can um, now move to the final presentation of today's session, uh, which is Higher Education Accountability System in Germany since the 1990s. And our presenter for, um, for this uh, presentation is uh, Rongmei uh, Go, a PhD student from the Institute of International and Comparative Education from Beijing Norman University um, in China. 
Uh, Rongmei, the floor is yours and we are looking forward to uh, listen to the final uh, presentation of session 13. Okay, thank you. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm appreciate the uh, opportunity to be with you today. My name is Rongmei Guo. My presentation concerns high education accountability system in Germany since the 1990s. And uh, my presentation is in four parts. Since the 1990s, the German higher education system has faced challenges such as inefficient financial resource, a rigid system of higher education management, and a decline in the quality of teaching and learning. Stakeholders have called for trends. Consequently, Ger Germany established an accountability system to ensure the quality of higher education and to respond to the concerns of stakeholders. After three decades of development, the accountability system for higher education in Germany has become more completed. And account accountability in higher education means that higher education institutions are legally and ethically accountable, re report and explain to higher education stakeholders about how they fulfill their responsibilities. And hold accountable for the consequence of reward and sanctions. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the subjects of accountability in German higher education. The higher education system involves many stakeholders, depending on the relationship between the sub between the subjects and the universities. They can be divided into internal and external accountability subjects. The subjects of internal accountability include professors, young scientists, students, seniors, presidents, university councils, deans. And the external stakeholders mainly include state governments, accreditation agencies, uh, evaluation agencies, NGOs, public third party funders, and businesses. Secondly, is about the content of German higher education accountability. The content of accountability refers to the interests of stakeholders according to the framework act for higher education. The institutions of higher education should, ser should serve the cultivation and development of the science and the arts. So research, teaching, studies, and further education. Beyond that, they should prepare students for professional activities that require the application of scientific knowledge and scientific methods or the ability to create art. The higher education institutions should inform the public about the fulfillment of their tasks. Since the tasks of universities are defined by law in Germany, the content of accountability is not limited to this. The interests of stakeholders are the main basis for accountability. Univers universities need to meet the expectations and the demands of different stakeholders and respond to them. Specifically, the interests of accountability stakeholders include autonomy, academic freedom, academic service, teaching quality, academic organization, resource quality, management capacity, decision making capacity, talent training, resource tra translation capacity, resource allocation and using international cooperation. Thirdly, they are four means of accountability. For example, contract management. Since the 1990s, the relationship between the state and the universities had changed from when we control to partnership. A contract, con a contract is negotiated between the state and the universities with defined the responsibilities of both parties. The contract with will really covers the areas, the characteristics of the university, the improvement of the quality of teaching and research, the training of reserve personnel, internationalization, and the development of subject, subject specialism. The second way is performance-based funding. Since the 1990s, the lender has gradually adopt, adopted the general budget model giving university, universities financial autonomy. On this basis, the lender introduced performance-based funding, which not only set out criteria for 
lo locating funds in terms of output, but also tests the effect effectiveness of outcomes for universities. At present, all the 16 states use promise-based funding. In recent years, some lender has have gradually increased the share of the performance-based funding, but the share in total uh, financial resource varies. However, the criteria for setting performance indicators are similar with the three main areas being teaching, research, and equality. And uh, accreditation, in the late 1990s, the accreditation system was introduced in Germany with the aim of accrediting the study programs on, of the three-tier degree system. Currently, the two most important forms of accreditation are accreditation of study programs and the quality management systems. And uh, the last one is evaluation. Evaluation. The land or the states attach great importance to evaluation. For example, according to the Higher Education Act of Baden Wittenberg, evaluation requires universities to conduct regular self uh, evaluations in order to evaluate the task performed by higher education institutions. In addition, external evaluations must be carried out regularly. Meanwhile, students are to be involved in the evaluation of teaching and learning. At present, a true tier evaluation system combining internal and exter external assessment, assessment is widely used in Germany. Internal evaluation is covered out by individual departments within the university with some guidance from external evaluation agencies. And, and the final results are present in the form of a report on the basis external experts carry out assessments, uh, mostly in the, mo in the form of peer reviews, which com committed in a report with findings and recommendations. There are no uniform evaluation criteria in Germany. Generally speaking, evaluations are aimed at disciplines. And the content of the evaluation covers three main areas. Uh, also teaching, learning, and research. Finally, there are four char characteristics of accountability in German higher education. German higher education has always clearly defined the responsibilities of higher education institutions, laws, and regulations, as well as educational planning are important tools for universities to clarify their responsibilities. Since the 1990s, each state has uh, formulated its own higher education act, on the other hand, the target contract are the educational plan that guides the work of universities. <coughs> Sorry. It covers the goals of the university's funding model, teaching research equality, and knowledge translation with both legal and educational planning safeguards, higher education institutions can clarify their responsibilities and respond to accountability timely and determine <coughs> the accountability subjects is the first part of BLD, uh, the accountability system. At present, the accountability system, the account at present, the accountability of higher education in Germany shows a model in which the state government and the president of the university are the leaders. Outside of the higher education system, the state, especially the state government, as the main provider of higher education funding, still occupies the top of power in managing universities. It is not noteworthy that the government has ceded some of its powers to the specialized stakeholders organizations, such as the accreditation council. And with, within the higher education systems, academic autonomy model is transformed into a management model and the increased prof professionalism and longer tenure of uh, administrators lead to a significant increase in the power of the president and the university council. And the quality of teaching and research is the main task of the accountability. Germany attaches importance to the quality of teaching and research. 
the quality of teaching is a fundamental guarantee of the quality of higher education, to which Germany has just not attested great importance. This is also reflected in the current accountability system, in the target contract and the performance indicators, ensuring and improving the quality of teaching and learning is the goal of the universities. And Germany, as the birthplace of the concept of combining teaching and research, desires to regain its position as the world scientific center and highlights the research functions in terms of accountability subjects. Improving research capacity is an important demand. And uh, at the end, a limitation of accountability is emphasized, which is also characteristic. Effective accountability not uh, does not mean unlimited accountability. Traditionally, strong forces of academy, of academy autonomy has ex existed alongside strong uh, bureaucratic regulation in the German higher education system. Throughout its history is of development, <clears throat> the autonomy of universities have been emphasized. Currently, the autonomy and academic freedom of German universities are Protected, protected by law according to the principle of academic freedom. Professors and junior professors can carry out their research and teaching tasks aut aut autonomously. In addition, the Joint Conference of University Presidents pointed out that the universities also need freedom of action, flexibility, and planning security in order to survive in the competition in, a, in the long term. For this reason, university autonomy should not be understood merely as the right to be autonomous in terms of status, but rather as the ability to be independent of the state influence in the legal, financial, personal, and organizational spheres. And uh, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rangmei uh, Guo. Yeah. And uh, we now reach the, the end of the, the presentations. And uh, I guess we can move on to the, to the Q&A part. Um, I don't know if anyone would like to say, uh, if any of the, of the speakers would like to say anything in relation to, in relation to, to common elements of your, of your presentations. Otherwise, I can, I can move on with my, with my first uh, question. Would you like to say anything in relation to your presentations or to, to other speakers? Um, if not, something that um, I, I was thinking about, and I think most of you emphasized in one way or another was um, what kind of training support exists from either from um, interviews that you conducted uh, with um, with educators and I think uh, this is this is maybe uh, mostly um, to to Sauhan he for um, because uh, you conducted um, interviews with educators so what is the training support that educators receive? Uh, in order to be able to adapt at the same time to, to the new textbook. And also, um, I was wondering if other speakers would like to say anything in relation to training support, because I think that this is an important element um, in relation to how flexible we can be, because, because we also need, uh, we, we are talking about flexibility and adaptability to new conditions. But we, I think it's really important to also talk about resources. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, so now may I, okay, may I start? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so you mean uh, which way can do the teacher's support, right? Yes, and how they feel about them uh, first, maybe question. So how they feel about the, the amount of training support they receive and maybe what is the, the, what is the, the broader 
a conversation with regards to, to training support in order to be able to adapt to the new conditions and the new textbooks or, um, mm -hmm. or new innovations in, in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, for answer for this question, I think uh, we can do some trainings from the uh, school, internal school and uh, external environment. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to do some training for the educators, maybe we can make some groups for the teachers in the same school. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the same school, they have uh, so many teachers uh, do the same subjects right and uh, they can do the communication uh, once a week or twice a week or uh, once a month and uh, this is a good way and uh, except the days uh, maybe they also can do the communication in the other school uh, that is external environment right uh, uh, such as uh, we can make a group in Sichuan province and uh, a lot of group in Beijing city and uh, make the two groups uh, 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 form a uh, communication and uh, they can communicate their ideas, their suggestions, their uh, progress uh, together. And this is a good way also. Uh, okay, this is for teacher's vision as for, uh, mm, as for, uh, educational department, they also can hold on some uh, conference uh, to uh, cultivate the teacher how to uh, teach the students, and they also can um, record some class and uh, show these classes to this teacher uh, to teach them how to uh, teach these students, and uh, they also can uh, write a lot of book and uh, make this book to guidance uh, how to teach the students. Yeah, so uh, uh, actually uh, we can do the supporting, we can offer the supporting from the two visions for <coughs> educators. That's my answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And I think this was um, this was an, an an excellent point because I really like that you that you really emphasize this uh, this interaction between a, a, a top down support but also a bottom up one because we definitely need some uh, we definitely need support from the department of from any department of of education when uh, when we have uh, when we have an innovation or any anything new that we need to that educators need to adapt. But also, I really like that you you really emphasized um, you really emphasized on uh, on collaboration and how how educators and teachers in general can communicate amongst them in order to 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 support one another because it's only through the everyday every everyday observation that we can also identify some 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 common needs. Uh, that uh, pupils or students uh, have in its case. Thank you so much for your answer. I think Evangelos have um, ha has a has a question to ask. So Evangelos, uh, feel free to ask. Well, me. actually, I have uh, some uh, comments and points uh, to make. Um, just on the latest exchange, uh, because I have trained teachers for many many decades. Uh, including um, teachers of Chinese in Australia for the Chinese minority there back in the early 80s. Um, and I find that as part of project-based uh, learning where it is fundamental, introspection of the teacher on the teaching her or his in less cases uh, on the teaching experiences uh, <laughs> is extremely important. In other words, looking back at the actual classroom experience, analyzing it and writing up uh, according to uh, also guidelines uh, and what we uh, often call in problem-based learning, uh, reflective diaries. Uh, and these reflective diaries, uh, at the end of every teaching uh, session, uh, 
um, and then cumulatively, um, formative and so on and so forth, uh, can be a, uh, a very rich uh, source, a gold mine of observations and opportunities for uh, improvement. Uh, as I said, I have used it and it's very useful. And two autoethnographic comments, personal experiences. Um, I have connections with two aspects of what Shahan uh, presents and represents. Sichuanese for more than 50 years has been my favorite beloved food. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sutran. Yeah. Can you I yeah. absolutely love it and miss it, you know? Yeah. And uh, the second is that uh, since you are at the University of uh, Malaysia, uh, yeah. I have, of course, experiences uh, from three different uh, decades in uh, Malaysia. Wow. Um, and I would like to, uh, if you don't know already, Professor Zaliha. Omar, do you know her? Mm, uh, in education faculty? She's uh, Malaysian and she's the leading expert uh, on uh, people with uh, handicaps, the AMEA. Oh. Uh, and uh, I worked with her at the Al Bukhari wow. International University up in uh, Alor Star. Uh, she's a tremendous person. Mm -hmm. You can spot her in the crowd immediately because she always wears funny hats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. And she's now doing a second PhD in uh, Japan, but we are in touch with her. We, we chat on uh, WhatsApp and so on. She's really a tremendous person. And she was in charge of the university program with the communities of the handicap by using students who themselves were not part of educating them, but it was part of their community service. Okay, And I think this is uh, extremely important to develop. Uh, uh, as I said, it should not be just the task of students who will be teachers uh, of uh, the handicap, but it should be everybody's uh, yeah. community solidarity sort of uh, concern. Um, sorry to take so much time. <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank, thank you, thank you, time. Professor. Okay. Thank you, Aphrodite. Yeah, welcome to all of you to come to Stran. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other question? Anyone would like to say something? I was also, um, I think I was also in, um, very interested to, to hear a bit more about also the last presentation on university autonomy, because um, we, um, because I think uh, Rang Mei Guo uh, touched upon this uh, to, towards the end, but uh, I, I'm just, I'm just wondering um, if you could elaborate a bit more on how you, how you visualize uh, this university autonomy, um, or if if you have any ideas from from what you've seen so far. Uh, about uh, autonomy in the university, I have no further research about it. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. What what did you say? I think. Uh, I couldn't hear you very well. <clears throat> Are you with us? Yes, yes. Um, my net network is not good, I think. And uh, I just said uh, about the academic freedom uh, in Germany. I have um, not very further research about it. So I have no ideas. Okay. Okay, this is fine. Thank you so much.
any other ideas, any comments? Yes, Evangelos, feel free. Uh, for that uh, last uh, presentation precisely on uh, Germany, uh, it may have been my, uh, I don't know, I may have missed it, but the three areas uh, that uh, were mentioned, um, teaching, uh, <coughs> teaching, learning and research, was it? Uh, yes. Okay, and here, precisely in the context of our whole many days of uh, interaction and even my comment uh, previously, um, what about uh, what uh, in the uh, global university uh, innovation context is called the third mission uh, of the university? In other words, in addition to uh, teaching and research, community service. So is that involved uh, or included rather uh, in, the, uh, in the whole system of assessing uh, uh, universities in Germany or not? Um, I think uh, the main task, uh, uh, the account accountability system of, of in German higher education um, attach more in importance of the research and uh, teaching and learning about the third mission. I think uh, in the accountability system, it's not uh, uh, very important, but it's important. It is important to you, but not to them, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But my research is limited, so I don't know uh, I, if I'm right or not. Yeah. Yeah. We can also ask uh, Professor Jurgen. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for um, asking and answering uh, the question. Uh, any any other question or anything would like to say uh, something about any of them of the presentations or if um if uh if we go back to to my initial question regarding training support if um if the other two speakers uh would would like to share their experiences or their 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 thoughts with us on, on training support, how satisfied, for example, educators are with regards to, to, the, re, to the resources they have or uh, with regards to collaboration um, uh, among other teachers and um, educators. It is uh, if I uh, if uh, you have no more questions, you can take a small break because at uh, eleven forty Greek time we yeah. are starting directly next session. I believe you got my message, uh, so it's as you like. You can take a small break before we start at uh, eleven forty Greek time. Uh, the next session at the planetary room, as you like. Definitely, yeah. Uh... So unless you have uh, no questions, uh, we can we can wrap up. And uh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank, uh, I would like to thank all all presenters for the wonderful uh, presentations because I think uh, we we learned uh, a lot, uh, especially um, especially for the Chinese context, but also the the German one, which is which is always uh, very useful and um, gives us um, food for thought um, uh, in relation to, to issues that uh, exist in education and how we can adapt um, with uh, what we discussed before in relation to, to training support and resources that, that we have from departments of, of education, but also from a bottom-up uh, level and how we, we communicate and collaborate with, uh, with our colleagues 
um, in the field. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Okay, we will meet for the planetary session in about uh, 15 minutes. Definitely. Enjoy your day. Thank you all. Thank you.